It's your boy, Signs of Life. Back once again with a deeper than usual live stream. I'm gonna try to conduct these live streams in more of a recorded video fashion, you know? I don't know if you guys are aware, but this is all based on YouTube algorithms and watch time, and the last thing I want is for someone to click away from a video because they're bored or they didn't learn anything in the first five minutes, so. I'm gonna try to hold your guys' attention as long as possible, and uh, we're gonna learn some stuff. We're gonna, this is almost like a, you guys are getting basically a master class in Ambient. And I realize that. But we're still on we're still on the trip up. You know what I'm saying? We haven't even reached 1K yet, but we're on our way there. So thank you guys so much for supporting me. Thank you for watching, subscribing, liking this video. Make sure you smash that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, if this is your first time here. My name is Chris. This is Signs of Life. We got Travis in the house, Deep Sub, Micron, Nils inside the Pyramid IO Flow. What's up, boys? All right, so let's get right down to it. Joel Walden, man, what's going on? So let's get right down to it. We're gonna talk about, um, I have a I have surprise, I have a syllabus today. <laughs> For a live stream, I mean, come on, right? So what we're gonna talk about, this video I titled The Ambient Secrets, why? Because there are so many things, that, like the whole world is going crazy right now. We have a bunch of, I mean, you just, Look at your YouTube feed. I mean, everybody's just sharing stuff. The whole world, I mean, we all, we're all we all coming together um, to share our knowledge, to enlighten each other, to help each other build and grow. And there's never been a more exciting time, I feel, in my life uh, to be doing what we're doing right now, which is creating ambient music. So, building on basic ideas, I see a lot of producers out there who are trying to overcomplicate the process by trying to either like make something that they're not capable of or or try to like they're trying to I don't know they're just making it more complicated than it actually needs to be okay so today we're gonna build on basic ideas and we're gonna use simple techniques to get great results I, I can't emphasize this enough how if you really break it down to like a simple ADSR mentality. Like, okay, it's just attack, decay, sustain, release. Like, that's all it is, right? So if you take those things in to context, you're really just modifying envelopes and filters and using basic oscillators to create good music. That's all you really need, okay? So we're gonna talk about that today. Um, and the other thing that I've been thinking about a lot lately that I really wanna go over right now is it's really hard to make something sound good if it doesn't sound good. Let me say that again. It's hard to make something sound good if it doesn't sound good. You know what I'm saying? So either you're over-engineering the thing that you're trying to create or you're using a synth that doesn't really sound good and you're trying to make it sound good, but goddamn, good hardware is expensive for a reason because it sounds good. <laughs> it's like, you know, you listen to me, you use my hydrosynth, it sounds good, and I love the way it sounds, and lately I've been flat out addicted to my hydrosynth because it sounds good. And every time I reach for something new where I'm like, ooh, I want something quality, I go, I'm just gonna make it on the hydra, because it sounds good, right? I love the sound, I love the way it feels, all of it, all right? So that's that. Now. That leads me into uh, our next uh, subheader, ambient tool. So you don't need expensive hardware or software to make music. I just kind of like double backed on what I just said, but this is true, okay? There are so many inexpensive options out there. You don't need an Iridium to make good music because we've been talking about the Iridium on the forum and Echo Season left a whole, I mean, on our Discord, Echo Season just broke down the whole Iridium. After I read his paragraph on the Iridium, I felt like I knew exactly what the Iridium was. That's what kind of information you get on our Discord. If you guys want to come join it, the link is down below. So, you don't need an Iridium to make awesome music. Yes, Martin Scherzer and Echo Season use Iridiums, and they sound damn good. But you don't need it to make one, okay? I'm just telling you that. I love an Iridium, but I don't need it to make good music. Neither do you. If you guys don't know what Iridium is, it's a really expensive hardware synth. Probably the best, I mean, it's like top shelf. It's like best in class right now. Anyway, so 
the other thing is, is that synths and sounds should sound good with no effects. Now, I myself am totally guilty of this. I used to just like drench my stuff in effects, thinking it sounded cool and it sounded good. But now, as I've matured as a producer, I'm starting to realize, and my partner Don has, has, has pretty much opened me up to this fact. Lately, I'm not talking, I'm, I'm talk I mean, this is something that I'm learning continually, okay? But especially when we're working on the new Ascendant stuff, it should sound good without any effects whatsoever. And then you add effects on top of that because it's hard to make, it's like, you know, everybody says, can't polish a turd. Like, you can't, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I use the best reverb, I think, out there for software, and it's Valhalla's reverb, and it sounds beautiful, but if I put something, it makes everything sound almost too good. You know what I'm saying? So lately, I've been making stuff on the Hydra, and I'm making sure that it sounds, like, really good, and then I'm starting to add the reverb. Okay? Anyway. The other thing we're going to talk about is discovering long and forgotten gems in your arsenal. Sometimes as producers, we got we have like serious gas syndrome, which is gear acquisition syndrome. So we're always looking for something new. Well, if I get this, then I'll be I'll be I'll be able to do that. Or if I get this, then I'll be able to sound like that. It's like straight up. There are so many gems in your arsenal that you probably forgot about that um, are still good tools to use. Okay. So lately, two of the ones that I wanted to focus on today is Axon 2 from Audio Damage and Bioscape. All right, <laughs> I just chose those two as like two things, two areas that I want to focus on that we can go over, we can learn them all together, and you can, I can help you realize how cool they are and they're inexpensive, but great tools, all right? All right, and then our last subheader is bringing it all together. Identifying where you need the most work and then focusing on those areas. I think I talked about this on a previous tutorial, which was like it, when you have stuff that, you know, you know, say you're not really good at sound design and you're focusing a lot on presets or you're not really good at sound design, focus on that before you even put a song together. You know what I'm saying? Try to get that aspect down. I got plenty of videos on my channel now where you guys can watch me design sounds from scratch. And we're going to design sounds from scratch today. So you guys are here and for... Again, another master class. So, also putting your energy and time into something tangible and setting your expectations accordingly. So this means like, if you haven't even released an album yet, just start putting single tracks on SoundCloud. That's how I started. You know what I'm saying? Or single tracks on Bandcamp, release singles and start moving the, the train forward down the track. You know what I'm saying? Move that ambient train down the track so you can start eventually building up to release. A release on a label like Sinfera Exosphere doesn't just happen like overnight. It doesn't happen even within a time frame of like a six months. Like it's a it's a almost a lifetime of generative like effort and then you reach that point. You know what I'm saying? I mean I, I me personally I didn't release on Exosphere for the first four years that we had the, the label. Okay not four years. It was three. It, it took me three years. You know what I'm saying? To, to finally get to that point in my own mind and production where I was like, I'm ready now. And then Star Tarot was born. Okay? The other thing is, the last, the last thing I, before I even stopped just writing this all together was don't be afraid to let art just be what it is. I see a lot of people out there who are like con self-conscious to the point of like they don't release anything because they're afraid to just let the art be. And that's why... I love the ambient, Ambi ambient Online compilation series is because I give people a platform to just release stuff with no judgment, just like release it and get it out there. Even if it's, it's, just, a, it's just a benefit album, you know, but it's also a platform to say, let's just release it. Let's get it out there and let people enjoy it. Because that is uh, really one of the great benefits of, you know, being an artist is letting art just be what it is. I'm guilty of this. You might be guilty of this, you know? Stuff you got to think about. Anyway, we're here on YouTube.com. This is Signs of Life. My name's Chris, and we're going to uh, start getting into some music. All right? So I've got um, I've got this cool split screen, and we can play the Hydra synth over here. And I want to show you guys um, part of my process 
that I've been kind of like, this is what I've been doing, okay? I've just been... I've been, I'm just playing hydrosynth. I just start with a blank patch on hydrosynth, and I just let my mind just kind of drift away for a moment, all right? So let's let, let this track just kind of evolve. We're going to let the, the track move into a next phase. All right? So here's Hydra at its most basic level, okay? I hope that sounds good. Tell me, let me know in the comments if that sounds good, all right? Anyway, all right. So now with Hydra, like I said, you could also get caught up in this mentality of like you're you're overcomplicating it. All right. So let's let's make something that's not overly complicated. All right. Let's just go in envelope two and we'll adjust the attack and we'll adjust the decay and we'll adjust the sustain down to like 70 and then we'll adjust the release and then we'll go like this and there we go. All right. So as you guys can see. Uh, based on the curve that I just made, that's not a, that's not a complicated envelope, right? It's a very simple envelope, okay? It's just a slope up, a decay, a sustain, and a release. And the default waveform sounds like that, okay? Simple, right? But to me already, like, that sounds cool. That sounds good. Okay? But that's just a default waveform. So let's choose another waveform. Let's choose this one. All right, cool. That's where we are. Let's add it, let's, let's go to the mixer. Let's up oscillator two. And we'll put a sawtooth on top of that. Now we have a sawtooth mixed with that one waveform. Very good. And it's because I set my envelope properly that it sounds like a cool pad, right? I have a four second attack, a five second decay, the sustain is at 77, and the release is at six seconds, all right? Simple recipe. Simple node input, all right? Very good. All right. Now let's get some filter in it. We're going to adjust the cutoff. And then you can start playing. Now this is where it gets a little delicate. How much of the filter do you want to have hit those frequencies? Add a little rezzo. There's a magic zone. And you guys know what I'm talking about. All right. There's a magic zone where you reach that point where you're like, ooh, like that's the good stuff. What is up here? Oh, I forgot to enable that track. That was good. All right. That sounds good to me. And again, no effects, no effects, okay? So we haven't added any effects to the synthesizer and it start, it's starting to sound good. So that's another thing is you gotta make sure this is, this is where you're at, all right? Whether you're using Vital, whether you're using uh, an Iridium or whatever, it doesn't matter, okay? Simple sounds produce great results. That was our first point that we made on our syllabus was it you have we're building on basic ideas simple techniques bring great results okay so if you can design an envelope you can design it every single time the same then it's gonna sound good all right I want to pause I want to pause the track okay I'm gonna show you guys now let's let's pan out some of these sounds we're gonna give a little bit wider wider stereo effect I'm gonna pan oscillator one a little bit to the to the left oscillator two a little bit to the right okay let's hear it one more time Simple pad, right? Simple pad. Now I'm gonna add the reverb. Now listen. You see what I'm saying? 
what I'm saying? Now add it to the track. Now let's play the track. I'm gonna go octave higher. Trick sync, all right? And we're gonna put that at a BPM sync of like, I don't know, 16. Okay, we're gonna come over to the mod matrix and we're gonna say LFO3 is now controlling filter one's cutoff by a subtle amount, all right? Now let's hear it. And it's gonna come back on it. There you go. I'm holding the keys down. You hear that? So we have a, now we have a subtle LFO movement going wah, 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 wah. Okay. IO flow, I couldn't have said it better myself. The effects are like crystalline icing on an already tasty dessert. That's what I'm talking about. Okay? Because, I mean, this channel, I've now put, we're now, we're now, I don't know how many videos we're like, you know what I'm saying? Like, we're, we gotta be at like a hundred if you count the live streams and the, and the videos together. And we're almost at a thousand subscribers. So I've gone over a lot of the finer points of, of ambient music creation, but this is like what I want the channel to be. I want the channel to be like, you guys come here and you're getting a master class from Signs of Life. You know what I'm saying? You're getting a master class. So we're not overcomplicating the process and we're making good tools sound good just by using simple techniques, okay? I love the way that sounds, I'm gonna go deeper. Oh my God, I, I just realized I can play my push and the LPK at the same time. <laughs> Holy crap, I can do that. What? All right. I'm like uh, Van Gallus over here. Check it out. I've literally got one hand on the other keyboard and the other hand on this one. Oh, this is sick. Wow. Okay. I hope I made that point clear enough. Is that number one, y'all should just go buy a hydrogen. I'm, <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, number two was that um, you know you you make sure your set your your sound sounds good, okay? And then you start adding that beautiful, gorgeous delay and that beautiful, gorgeous reverb on top of what you already have, and uh, there you go. And by the way, if you guys own uh, Valhalla Delay or Valhalla Room Reverb, I'd be happy to send you my preset. I, I'm totally open to it, you know? Like this would be a part I would lay down. I would lay this down right now. Yeah, the delays and the reverse from the utility template 
which you can get at Material, Sa Material Sounds, which is material.bandcamp.com. It's a super easy address. Uh, they are really awesome because Don is a really uh, experienced programmer. He's very, very good at what he does. Okay, so now what I said was we're going we're gonna to discover long forgotten gems on our arsenal here. All right, so the way I want to do that is by introducing an old tool that I used to use in the Signs of Life days that has now been updated to version two. It's a quirky ass little drum computer called Axon. All right, Axon is super fun, it's super cool, and it sounds like this. I made this little patch before I got in the air here. But do you hear why I made it like this? It's that simple, kind of like low, almost bongo-like. But you combine that with a little bit of delay and some reverb and you're... Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Change the timbre of this thing. Okay. So this is like a simple rhythm, right? But this tool, again, very inexpensive, especially you get it when Audio Damage has a sale or something. They have like, you know, like 35% off sales or, or whatever. Like you could get this tool for very cheap and you probably get some cool results out of it. Nice. Feedback slash filter. Oh, that's cool. Okay. Oh yeah. <laughs> I think you can automate the X and Y if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, you sure can. Look at that. <laughs> Look at that. See? You can automate that. Right there. Right? All right. So I'm gonna duplicate this and then we're gonna let's let's go into Axon. Alright? Okay, so let's go and we will duplicate this track. And we will um, start with an empty starting patch. Okay? Now Axon right now is just running. Alright, it's just going running. So you come up here to the time value, and you can either have the center node be at 30 second notes, which is hella fast, 16th notes, or eighth notes. I like eighth notes because it's more like ambient style. Okay? And as you can see, that, that node is pulsing right now. All right? Can you guys see this? Oh, yeah. See, audio damage, man. Chris Randall, he knows how to program. See, we got, we got uh, what do they call that? Variable plug-in whatever. It's, it's because the plug-in is vector. I, I can't stand plug -in programs in 2021 that don't have, like, flexible sizes. Like... This is just a good interface, and good programmers can do this. You can make it any size you want. So much better on the eyes, and so much more convenient. Anyway, okay, so here's, here's what it is. You have an FM control, a timber control, you have FM send, AM, distortion, noise, whatever, okay? So I'm going to, uh, Right now, I turned I turned it on. I'm gonna turn off the delay, turn off the reverb, and we're just gonna put it to zero. So we have, I mean, you can make this sound like a hi-hat just by adding noise, listen. So that's sort of your hi-hat thing. You could go center note like this. 
That's just a set. That's kind of cool. I mean, look at this. Look at this. Delay. Look at this. You know what I'm saying? It could just be a hi hat. That's just noise. Okay? You can also adjust the release though. And then you adjust the note. Okay? Well, we don't want that. We want this. And we'll adjust all the pitch. Okay? So that's cool, right? Now, the way you make this, um, these things are called nodes, right? And they can either listeners or receivers. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit the network button, which is very important. That's how you connect all these nodes together. You hit network, right? And then what we're gonna do is, is we're gonna connect these together. So every time that this is hitting, this other one is hitting. But if we adjust the threshold to say four, now it's gonna hit every four beats. You understand what I'm saying? And now we can adjust the release curve, and we can adjust the pitch amount, blah, blah, blah. But this could be a different note. This could be another note in the E minor scale. Check it out. Let's make a G. G1. G1. Okay? And then you have a mixer here on the bottom, which is kind of cool. So do you hear what's happening? So every four, every four, then this one is triggering, all right? Now let's say that we wanna network these other nodes together. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click this one and then I'll click another node. And now it's connected. Right, but what if you put an odd timing on this node? What if you put an odd timing of say three and you made this one like a D or something? Let's make it like D3. There. Get all this pitch stuff out of here. Timber here. You see it? You hear that? There you go. So it's hitting every three when that note hits. Isn't that cool? All right, now let's start doing some other random stuff. Let's go connect, um, let's connect this one to this one. And we'll make that zero. We'll make this guy zero, cause it, so he happens every, no, we'll make it one. And then this one goes like this, and we'll go like this, and we'll move it up to like, I don't know. See how fun this is? We're gonna get some really unexpected results in a second. So with this one, let's connect this one to that one, okay? And we'll take that to two, and we'll make sure that we don't have any pitching on it, blah, 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 no FM. And we'll bring the... There we go. <laughs> yeah. All right. I haven't even put any delay on it. It's going to be really fun. There we go. Nice. And we'll change the threshold to like, I don't know, five. There we go. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. And then we'll do something unexpected. We'll say, we'll go here, and this one will be that. We'll call that upon that, and then we'll go like this, and we'll go like this, and I don't know, make it like another E. Make it every like three and then boom like this. Oh, this is getting good. This is getting good, guys. There we go. Nice. <laughs> nice. Alright, so this is one, zero, one, two, three, and that's like number four. Nice. Alright, now let's add some delay. <laughs> we just made that! Alright, and now let's go back to our hydrogen. I 
wrong and if I didn't tell you how cool it was. I could have done a recorded video, but I felt like the live stream format today as a master class was a more appropriate choice. I was single trying wait till it goes on sale. It goes on sale and it'll be like 39 bucks. He'll have a um, he'll have a Black Friday or something. He's very uh, he's very generous about it. So now we got our hydrogen patch and we also got Axon. showing you these tools is because in the ambient tool subheader of our syllabus today I told you that we just dis were discovering long forgotten gems in our ambient arsenal right axon 2 came out axon the original came out like years ago uh, version 2 came out maybe like a year and a half I mean I don't know when it was, it was released yeah probably about a year and a half ago but the point is is for you guys to realize not to show you all these bunch of fancy tools and stuff, but like, you know, like Cameron, like Venus series channel, he also, he often shows you like free plugins, free. You know what I'm saying? I, I do a lot of free plugins too. Axon's not free, but it's definitely inexpensive. Okay. So the point is, is that you might already have what you need in your arsenal. So take that into account when you're producing music. You're like, wait a minute. Do I like gas is what it is. And we are craftsmen that need tools, okay? I've said this so many times on my stream before, but I just want to say it again because now we have a bigger audience. We're like craftsmen, okay? Mechanics need tools, straight up. Carpenters need tools. Uh, welding manufacturers need tools, okay? Everybody needs tools, right? Musicians need tools to make music. However, all the tools in the world doesn't make a master craftsman. The master craftsman is the one who knows how to use every single tool from the hammer on up. You know how to use a hammer, a saw, a drill, a welder, whatever. You can do it. And if that's your mentality is like, I'm just going to go off what I got and learn those and work with other people and work with, you know what I'm saying? And just build on your own. That's what's going to make you a master, okay? And I'm just telling you this because I have enough experience and I've met enough people in my life who are always looking for more software, more gear, more this, more that. As an old wise Chris from Signs of Life, you don't need the most expensive stuff, all right? <laughs> just use what you got and maybe, you know, if you get a Christmas bonus or something or you find you know, $800 on the ground, go buy yourself a Hydra set, then you'll be happy. All right, so there you go. Let's add some more Hydra back in it. something like this in mini news we covered mini news yesterday it's so easy to make stuff like this in mini news where stuff triggers every once in a while and like you have the duration set on certain nodes that only trigger when the traveler reaches them and oh my god mini news is so mind-blowing i had my friend uh steve hit me up today he's like do i need mini news i'm like dude I don't know, but like, you know, it's it's definitely its own thing, so I would try it. Yeah, I mean Synchrotron, that's what that's what I'm I'm trying to, to be here on YouTube, is a place where you can come, learn, chill, hang out, and um, you know, every once in a while we'll go into the, the full edited, you know, class and stuff. So anyway, that's Axon 2. 
Again, there's so much other stuff you can do. We can adjust the FM. We can do like pitch envelope stuff. You can do this filter thing here. It's got effects, uh, some subtle effects. It pretty much does, you know, a couple things and it does it really well. All right. So we're going to leave that running. And the other thing I want to talk about was Bioscape. Because um, Bioscape is a program by a good friend of mine. It's in contact. That's the other thing that hangs people up is that it's in contact. But you can also run it in contact player. Okay, I just want to make that clear is that you can run Bioscape in player and it doesn't have to be, um, you don't have to be a full NI. Uh, there. <laughs> I was about to say subscriber, but <laughs> I'm surprised that um, Native Instruments hasn't gone subscription yet. Or have they? Have they? I don't know. Either way, Bioscape is made by Soren Ivo, aka Luftro, who is a top shelf human being. And I stand by anything he creates. It's that good. Okay? So, what is Bioscape? Bioscape is a biological texture generator. Um, it can do a lot of things that I don't even uh, know. <laughs> it, it's got more, I, I, you know, modulation than I have even explored. But I want to, I want to make you aware that it's here and it still is being updated and it's, it's badass. Um, I was able to get my hands on Bioscape early, um, and I have been pleasantly surprised. Uh, Peter from Echo Season. Severa Artist has many presets inside of Bioscape. Um, and you can check those out. So anything that's labeled ES is Echo Season. Uh, you, so those are obviously quality. Okay, there's actually a lot of Echo Season patches in here. Um, we can listen to some of them. This is one of my favorites. The Fields of Lore. Check this out. Ready? Let's turn off the Hydra for a second. pause the rest of the track and we're going to listen to an Echo, Echo Season masterclass here. That's Peter, aka Echo Season. Discord regular. <laughs> Yeah, Bioscape is not, this is not showcasing a free plugin. But. Okay. So, what can you do with Bioscape? I just want to kind of show you guys what you can you do. Bioscape comes with four different slots. And these slots can be filled with anything that you want. It can be filled with, you know, drones or textures or even your own stuff like you can just drag and drop your own stuff in here okay so if we start here at the init we got nothing we got a b c d if you go click up here you got a b c d now if you just click inside the window um or the inside of here it comes with all these different you know sounds but it's not just these are just the categories okay so if we hit click on bode and then we click on inside of the box, you have all these different bode instruments. You have the needles popping, sliding, squeals, sword scream, diddly sustain, whatever. But let's go for something more like um, forest. Okay, let's let's even use this just for textures. Okay, so we're gonna say, uh, let's see, bird symphony, right? So if I hit bird symphony. I'm going to turn off my own reverb and delay. I'll also go into the effects here and turn off the um, reverb. Ooh. Okay. Anyway, so we're listening to Bioscape here. Now, one of the things I love to do in Bioscape is put it in reverse. <laughs> So you can instantly, your mind can kind of go, oh, wow, huh, huh, yeah, yeah. All right, 
If we choose a filter here, such as the, um, I don't know, low pass, whatever, add some resonance. Now we have a filter on our little bird symphony here, which can be very helpful. And now listen to this when I turn on my reverb and delay. The no, like really what this sounds like until I hit, until it actually comes up. Ooh, Forsaken Factory. I like the sound. Got a filter on that too. Wow. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. Now check this out. See, behind all that, your mind kind of goes, whoa, what is that? Are those birds? You don't even know. Let's do, um, let's do water. Oh, look at how many water he's got. Oh, he raindrop. Oh, wow. Look at that. Oh, damn. Okay. <laughs> Are you guys having buffering issues? Uh, it might be your connection, man. I apologize. See what I mean? So right now we have rain pipe dripping and birds singing us together. My CPU is fine, boys. Sorry about the issues. But think about think about textually what this can add to your sound. adding a textural element that wasn't there before it can also be its own synthesizer because we can also add you know bowed stuff in here whether it's drones like it's got drones tons of drones look at the drone harmonic one so now we're talking about bioscape being its own synthesizer Yeah, I know. It's literally gold dust. It is. He worked forever on this, too. This was, like, a crazy project. Um, I had him on for an interview one time, and uh, he told me all about it. Pretty wild stuff. It's also got a whole modulation section here, so we can say, you know, LFO1. Uh, we can set the rate. We can sync the rate to, like, I don't know, 1 over 1. And then we can have that um, control here. LFO1 is controlling cutoff A. So now our birds are being modulated through a filter cutoff. Listen to that. Oh my God. Just that subtle touch of LFO on the birds. You see what I mean? That's what I'm talking about. Because it lets every, like, oh, <laughs> yeah. That one, that just that little LFO. Subtle LFO. That's what I was talking about in the syllabus was if you overcomplicate it, simple techniques produce good results. So I'm holding down a key, a simple, like, slow LFO allows some of those harmonics to come through, and there you go. Yeah, a bit of modulation makes all the difference. 
you probably could. Iris 2 is on my list. Night Psyche, I would, um, I will go over Iris 2 in a future episode of Ambient Tools and we'll do this, this whole thing, right? I will go over Iris 2 because I feel Iris 2 is like, it's one of those synthesizers where it is very powerful, but I feel like they almost just like, now they're just giving it away. I mean, you can get Iris 2 for free, you know, by paying like $49 or something. Like, it's ridiculous. Like, Iris 2 is now just a throwaway tool for them, and it had so much potential. So cheap. sounds included with Iris 2 make it worth it alone like the the the, the breadth and the of the library is insane ten dollars I mean ten dollars for that sound library is nuts nuts I don't know what's going on over there at Isotope man I guess I just figured like ah it's not selling so we might as well just give it away Wow. I'm in love with this. It sounds so good. All right. Anyway. So I hope you guys are um, picking up what I'm putting down. Okay? I hope you are. Because I really want more to feel like it is possible. Even if you don't, are not like, you know, there yet, you can get there. about this is what the whole channel is about that's what this whole that's what the life you know that's why you're watching you're watching because you there's some part of you that believes that you guys could all be some fair artists you guys could all be on exosphere each and every one of you Okay, so sound design 
at its core, I demonstrated that on the Hydrosynth. It's sound design, it comes from basic ideas, like simple, like, okay, ADSR. What's my attack? What's my decay? What's my sustain release? If you got that, you got that, cool. You can do anything with a sawtooth wave, I guarantee it. So like, if you can do that and just design simple envelopes, right? Think about what you could do with those envelopes after that, okay? You have an envelope to control something else, your filter. You have an envelope to control the noise. You have an envelope to control whatever. Like, I was listening to um, Galaxia in the car the other day. Galaxia is the album that I just was released on Microcosmos that I have a track on. Also, I was listening to the high quality of my old friend Subdream and his sound. I was like, damn, this guy, I mean, it, it just sounded so good because he's, he's a good sound designer. There's no doubt about it. You know what I'm saying? He doesn't watch this show, show but he's, he's on our Discord. He's kind of a lurker and he just joined us, but just basic synthesizer sound design can take you so far. All right, and it's just simple tools, like the way he modulated his envelopes and his filters traveling. I was just like, that's so basic, but it's so effective. And I was driving around just kind of going, damn, like, that's, that's what makes good producing. You know what I'm saying? Understanding your tools, understanding how envelopes work, understanding how filters work, understanding how waveforms can come together to create art, right? Well, <laughs> that's okay. That's okay, Sleep Twitch. I would say if you get stuck in the sound design phase because you keep making new sounds, then start labeling your sounds with a certain goal in mind and then stick to that. Like, put them all into a category. Like, oh yeah, new album one, new album pad one, new album pad two, new EP four, or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Just stick them, make sure you're, if you design them all around a certain thing, maybe design a whole group of sounds and then make a track out of those sounds and don't design anything new. You know what I mean? It's like it's like putting a palette together on a paint, uh, you know, with, with paints and, and brushes and shit. Just put down the colors and pre-mix your colors, right? Because, like, not every color that you're going to use for a painting comes straight out of the tube. You know what I'm saying? So, like, sometimes you go, okay, if say people who make, like, watercolor paintings or even, like, people who make, like, acrylic paintings in you know, in real life, like you're doing like still lifes and stuff. The motherfucking apple ain't like red from the tube. The apple has a little bit of like green in it and it's got a little bit of yellow. And so you gotta mix, you know, this, this kind of color. If you're doing a landscape, that mountain ain't fucking lime green, it's fucking forest green. And so you gotta add a little bit more, you know, red to it to make the opposite, to make a little bit more neutral so you can get some of those browns or green tones out of it. All right? That was a long-winded explanation for something very simple, which is pre-mix your sounds, pre-mix your colors, and then everything will come together, okay? Then, putting your energy and time into something tangible and setting your expectations accordingly. So if you're gonna release an EP, release a damn EP. Bandcamp is free, it's available to everyone. Everyone on the planet can have a Bandcamp and release their album there, and then you guys can tell us about it because we have a Discord page, and then we can just all enjoy your record, or your EP, or your single, or whatever, and then you can get some feedback. Like, what do you guys think? We have a great feedback, track feedback system on our Discord right now. There's also Ambient Online, so you can go put it there, right? And then also not being afraid to just let art be what it is. It is what it is. <laughs> it is what it is. All right, anyway. So let's, let's look at this track and where it's going and where it's headed. I really want to lay down some of these uh, hydrosynth parts that I was doing. That was freaking good. That one hydrosynth moment that I had where I was doing this line. Before I go, before, no, not, not before I go, before I, before I leave this track or move on to something else, I want you guys to hear something. I, this Mercury Retrograde, I'll tell you what, man. The preview that we had, it was like gnarly, right? <laughs> the preview was nuts. And by I mean preview, I mean the last like couple weeks, shadow period. And then so this, now we're, in, now we're in the middle of it. Now we're going through it. I have just had so many just revelations. Like, whoa, like what? Oh my God. Like, just, just coming out of there. So let's look at this. I, I have to admit, I was using my, oh, This is what my pedal board sounds like. 
through the hydro. So that, that's hydrosynth, no effects. Hydrosynth, no effects. The pad we just designed. OBS did re disconnect. I don't know why. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sleep Twitch, man. We need like a support group. We need an ambient support group, dog. up something new hopefully ableton live 11 doesn't crash but we can continue on our path of bringing it all together come on ableton you can do it you can do it skylake processor you can do it you can do it 970 you can do it y'all can do it it's not responding <laughs> you can do it where now now is this my hydrosynth? No, it doesn't work. All right. It's loading. It's loading. It's loading. Come on now. I don't know if we can do it. We kill Ableton. We might have. Oh, we killed it. All right. We killed it. Those are my two favorite pedals. All right, Ableton has crashed. <laughs> let's try opening that project again. Uh, let's go, let's go, let's go. Sometimes Ableton doesn't like to win amp. What a champ. <laughs> no, you know what? You know what um, win amp is there for? Win amp is there because I have a cool, uh, all right, ready? Here's, so here's a new track for you. Um, One amp is there because I have a cool... Oh, crap! Whoa! Oh, my God! That was a CPU spike and a half, huh? Oh my God, is this trying to run a pad or something? Oh my goodness, that's a pluck. Okay. This is what? A pad. All right, let's, uh, dude, I almost just killed it. 
Um, let's turn that off. That was it. That was the problem. <laughs> you like that? Almost blew my brains out. Sorry. Oh, look at that. Okay, okay, okay. so good oh yeah more of that has some it looks like it's got some automation on it why I'm in love with that Oh, the baseline is delicious, isn't it? Right there. Right there where it changes. Let's focus on this. This section right here. Dope. All right, cool. Now we got now we got some energy. Now we got some energy. All right, so this is all ambient transmission 6. What? Thank you. 
This is something I've been experimenting with. Now that I figured out my audio interface. Is having a guitar input that just works. And what I mean by that is like, I was kind of sleeping on it for a long time. So, let's, um, let's pull out the threshold here. Can you guys hear that? Can you hear that? Let me know in the comments. If you can hear it, great. Can you hear that? 
I told everybody that you don't need expensive stuff to make good music. Here I am using a thousand dollars worth of hardware. To make some really gorgeous shit. I'm not even recording this though. Changes like you get different timbers. Let me just solo this track for a second. Let me solo this track. Okay? 
even though we have an expensive hardware box, the sounds and synths should sound good without effects. You should be able to design a synthesizer patch that sounds dope as hell and has no reverb and no delay and no compression whatsoever. Compressors are kind of a gimme because it's like it, it draws a line between effects and you know essentials, but it doesn't matter. Make something sound good without delay, without reverb, and then add some reverb to taste and see how it opens up. You're gonna, you, it's almost like using the right ingredients when you cook, it's gonna create a good result. All right? You don't just use the GMO beef for your dope ass steak meal. You know what I'm saying? You gotta start with the Wagyu. You gotta start with the prime, whatever they call it, filet mignon. I'm a vegan, I don't even eat that stuff anymore, but you know what I'm saying? You start with high quality ingredients and you get high quality results. So, spend the time to make your synths sound good and then put the effects on top of it. I think I overdid that one, but it doesn't really matter. Then we discovered long forgotten gems on our arsenal. We used Axon 2. We used Bioscape again. We're, we're bringing all this old school stuff together. I still sound like my voice has doubling on it or something. No input. All right, is that better? Okay, there we go. Anyway. And then, identifying where you need the most work. You need the most work in those certain areas, whether it's um, just, like I said, the sound design phase or the arrangement phase. We didn't even talk about that or the mixing phase. Those three things, sound design, arrangement, mixing. You can leave the mastering to someone else. So sound design, arrangement, mixing, right? Whatever those three areas you need the most work on, if something, if every second of music doesn't sound good, then you need to do whatever it takes to make that sound good. Every second matters. And I, believe me, I'm really trying to work on this on my own music. I'm trying to bring my energy into every single moment inside of the songs that I create. So when, you, when you're not like getting, your mind doesn't get bored. It's like, I find myself even getting bored of my own stuff sometimes. And I want to try to remove that boredom. I want to try to make it interesting and engaging all the way through. And that can be as simple as using simple sound design um, modulations to make something a sound sound interesting okay on the hydrosynth i find myself using a lot more like of the mutants to make cool harmonic resonances that i didn't that aren't there in the waveform to begin with and through those mutants i'm able to bring out sounds that sound more interesting because they're totally they have a little bit of that element of chaos to them but that little element of chaos takes away from the blandness. It's almost like adding an exotic spice to the soup and then you're like, ooh, that tastes good. Why does that taste good? Because it's that little hint of ex extra exoticness that makes it sound or sound or taste good, right? Okay, and then putting your energy and time into something tangible and setting your expectations accordingly. Putting all your energy into something that you'll never release isn't really worth it. You need to put your energy into something that is going to be released and whether you think it's good enough or not, it doesn't matter. You have platforms available to you that you can release these projects on. Okay? So setting all that energy and time aside to put your energy and don't just throw your music away. Put your music on a platform that's going to at least build up your confidence so you can work towards a bigger release. All right? Don't sell yourself short. Just because you're not a professional, professional is such a, a lame like terminology, like professional just means you do it for income or whatever, but professional can also be a level where you're like, I'm pro because I feel pro. I finally reached a point in my own production where I feel like, damn, what I'm producing is professional quality, okay? It's different for everybody. We all hold ourselves to different standards, but don't set your standards so high that you can never reach it. Also, don't hold yourself accountable that you're not reaching those standards. Stick by who you are, where you're at, and accept where you're at, especially right now, and just say, there's always higher levels to reach, and no matter where I am on that ladder, no matter where I am on everyone else's ladder, it doesn't matter. I'm on my own personal journey here, because if the world blew up tomorrow, it wouldn't matter if you reached anywhere that you, a goal you had in mind or not. It only would matter is the feeling of what you had and how it came across when you were here, okay? And I'm just talking about music, and I'm talking about ambient music, and I'm talking about pro like producing music in general. Try not to let yourselves get caught up in that higher standard and ideal, okay? I can listen to any of the songs on, say for example, Michelle Show, and I'll be like, damn, that's such a good song. I'll never reach that level. And I probably won't. I probably won't. Because they're, they're, these guys are already so good. 
And I'm just like, okay, that's cool. Good. I'm going to try to reach that point eventually, or I'm going to just follow my own path and follow my own muse. The music must come first. Uh, Mahane from Ultimate told me that. She said, the music comes first. That's what matters. It doesn't matter where it ends up. The music is what matters. I think I, I think I made my point clear. And don't just afraid, don't be afraid to just let art be what it is. You want to give away something for free because it's art? Cool, do it. I encourage you to do that because we need more art in the world. We need more people who are being generous in the world and not being so narcissistic. You know what I'm saying? This time period that we're in now is not about narcissism. It's about collectively how can we build together and how can we grow and share our gifts with each other. That's what it's all about. That's bringing it all together, all right? You guys have been great, man. This has been a lot of fun. I really appreciate you guys coming together. A lot of people came and run at the end. If you want to rewind and watch some of the stuff we did earlier, it was a great time. But that's what this channel is here for. The channel is here to inspire you, to motivate you. We're building a community here. You can catch us on Discord. Make sure that you um, like this video on the way out. If you haven't already, we are rapidly approaching 1,000 subscribers and I'm so excited to give away an hour of my time for one lucky winner. And it's gonna be, it's gonna be awesome. And I, I hope to do that for all of you because I give so many of these master classes away that it's almost like I'm giving my time away to all of you all the time. And yes, that's a lot of work, but at the same time, I truly believe in each and every one of you who's watching this show right now. Therefore, if I do, then we're all building this community and we can all sit around the fireside and say, damn, okay, look who where we are and look where we're going and look what the situation is and it doesn't matter. The whole world is burning around us. We still have our own soul and our whole mind and our own bubble of what utopia could be. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's my pleasure. Inside the pyramid, Stephen Clark, Michelle Louis, Henry Audubon, all these guys came in. Venus Theory was here. Sleep Twitch. Secretron. I Flow, I Stream, Night Psyche, Travesty, Miss Rider 404, what's up y'all, Chill Science is in the house, y'all are great, thank you so very much for spending your morning, afternoon, evening with me, I'll be back again soon with more live streams and educational content for y'all. But mostly it's just about the inspiration. It's about the feeling that you get when you watch Signs of Life and what you leave with. That's important. And the old school in Sanskrit, they used to say namaste. And namaste means I respect the God in you and together we are one. So namaste, my friends. Thank you all for watching. It has been my pleasure. As always, keep your heads in the clouds and your feet planted firmly on the ground. My name is Chris from Signs of Life, and I'll see you all on the other side.